counter conditioning. Does your dog bark or lunge when he sees another dog or even a squirrel? With counter conditioning, you can change your dog's responses into something a little more socially acceptable. And I'm gonna talk about that right now. If you'd like to make life better for you and your dog, the Border Collies and I would love you to join us. Yay, good job. So what is counter conditioning in dog training? Well, basically it's a way to change an unwanted response by creating a more positive association to whatever provoked that response. For example, your dog sees another dog and immediately barks or lunges. What if instead your dog quietly turned towards you and sits in front of you? I'm going to talk about some ways to use counter conditioning and also some specific things I'm doing to counter condition my young dog scheme. The counter conditioning that I originally learned to deal with dogs that were afraid of other dogs was to first create a lot of distance between your dog and that other dog so that your dog would be less stressed and could focus on you. Then, using a front clip harness, you would run backwards or different directions. Running backwards would help the dog to focus on you, and especially when using a front clipped harness or even a head halter in some cases. When the dog was able to focus on you enough to take a treat, you would train the dog to sit in order to encourage calm behavior. In an emergency situation, you would continue to direct the dog's attention to you until you were far away enough from the other dog that the dog could focus and respond to you. You would also try to make it fun for the dog and also make it the best choice for the dog. But sometimes the real life situation of meeting another dog in person, even from a distance, can just be too much for a particular dog and they can really struggle to focus. When a dog is highly fearful or excited or even frustrated, they're not in any kind of state to learn. But you can still prepare your dog for that situation by training your dog completely away from the situation. It sounds strange because if, for example, you're training your dog to deal with other barking dogs, how do you train away from that specific situation? So here's my example. I live on an acreage and my neighbor's dogs will bark on and off during the day and especially when I'm doing training because my dogs will tend to get excited during training and if they vocalize, that tends to draw the neighbor dog's attention. My other two dogs have learned to ignore the neighbor dogs, but Skeen gets highly agitated and he would gladly run the fence with these dogs if I would allow it. So for that reason, I have extra fencing between us and I also put Skeen on a long line. I want Skeen to be able to ignore the neighbor dogs and focus all his attention on me. So the first thing that I have to do with Skeen is I cannot allow him to repeat the behavior that I don't want him to do because the more he repeats the behavior, the more chances that in future he will continue repeating that same behavior. Just think about the behaviors that we do. If I have a dessert after every meal, it's really strange to not have dessert. We're creatures of habit and so are our dogs. So if I don't want Skeen to rush towards the area around the neighbor dogs, then I have to keep him restricted from that area or I have to keep him on a long leash. And in the same way, if I don't want him to bark, then I have to keep him from hearing the trigger that creates that barking or I have to be able to very accurately predict that trigger and distract him before he decides to bark. One way to do that is to mark and treat. So the idea is that when something occurs that creates a negative emotional experience, you replace the negative experience with something positive. A verbal marker is similar to a click from a clicker because you give it value. So you first choose a word. It could be yes, yes. or nice. Yes. And every time your dog looks at you, you reward yes. the dog with a small tasty treat. Yes. You can do this exercise by using some or all of your dog's meal. It's good use of a dog's food and your dog will enjoy the eating experience for longer. You can also use the word that you choose without expecting any behavior from the dog. The word itself becomes a signal for the dog to move towards you without you actually rewarding anything. Good boy! Yeah, go get that. Yes! Yeah! Good work, mister! 
This is best to start indoors and without distractions. I also know that when there's real world distraction, often I am moving and so is my dog. And so I want to make sure I add in movement to my practice. Again, it's really best to start this inside and without distractions. So basically your dog is responding nice. to your marker word without any distractions at all. Nice. When I repeat this on a daily basis, it will start nice. to become a conditioned response. The problem that I have found with using the marker word in an actual situation when the dog is fearful is that the marker word itself can become a predictor for something scary. So it's really important to use the marker word in daily training practice when your dog is happy nice. and relaxed and Good when work. it only predicts a fun time. Remember that the more fun you have with this, the more your dog will also enjoy it. Also, using a double clipped harness can be really helpful. You can break with the back part of the harness and you can steer with the front. <laughs> Only after your dog is enthusiastically and reliably responding to you, then would you start working on a real life situation. But you would still need to start at a really good distance so that your dog is well under the threshold of wanting to react to the situation. When I'm getting a great response inside with no distractions, then it's time to move outside. But again, it's really important to minimize the distractions so that your dog will reliably turn to you each time. Of course, in real life, your dog may do great for a while and then they can revert back to old ways. But don't be discouraged. You just need to keep practicing. Dog training truly is a marathon and not a sprint. Also make sure that you notice the small achievements because those small achievements may not be small at all to your dog. So for example, I've sometimes heard the neighbor dog barking and I've thought, well, maybe Skeen actually just doesn't notice because he's not reacting. But the fact is his hearing is far better than mine. And of course he's noticing, but he's actually progressing. It's just so much easier for us to notice the negative things going on than those tiny, small increments of positivity that go on every day. So make sure that you recognize those things and celebrate them when they happen. Another little tip I'd like to give you is when there are specific noises that your dog reacts to that are really difficult to escape from completely, one of the things that I've been doing is bringing the radio with me on a walk. So I take a portable radio along just to drown out the sounds a little bit. And of course you can still hear them, but it's just not quite as intense for him. I've actually even tried attaching an iPod to his harness in order to drown out some of the sounds. And I would say that it does help. Mark and Treat is just one way to shape your dog's automatic response to you and to help them want to focus on you. Training is ongoing during a dog's life. And the more that you do fun relationship building games with your dog, the more you get a dog that's focused on you and not the neighborhood distractions. I'll be posting some more fun relationship building games right about here. See you in the next video.